uh, today's lecture is on uh, order analysis after having discussed uh, the Fourier transform, Fourier series, Fourier analysis. Usually I uh, would have seen that in uh, Fourier analysis we dealt with uh, stationary signals wherein the signal was not changing during the time the Fourier operation was being done. But in real life you will see instances where the machine's speed do not remain constant and they change while you are doing either the data acquisition or doing the analysis. We have discussed about subsystem analysis wherein we could find out the families of sidebands. But today in the last series on signal processing that would be completing module 3, we will be discussing about uh, order analysis. So, let us see what this order analysis is. To begin with, I will just recall your uh, discussion on uh, ideas on signal. Signals could be periodic. and very deterministic or CDM signals could be, this could be an example of your stationary signal and another could be non-stationary in the sense. The features of the signal over a given block of time are different like the mean, standard deviation etcetera could be different over different blocks of time, which is the reason why we call them to be non-stationary non as opposed to stationary signals whose RMS amplitude, whose mean, whose standard deviation is the same no matter how long where you take the sample or take the signal. But let us take the case of a signal from a rotating machinery wherein the speed was changing and you will recollect maybe if the frequency was increasing again decreasing this kind of time period will be obtained. This is the high frequency band and this is the relatively low frequency and this is the amplitude. Now, how is such a signal generated is first we will see and then I will take you to the uh, one experiment wherein I will show you how this has been collected. Usually if I have a rotating shaft, and there is a usually a key wave. and this shaft is rotating. If I and of course, you know this is held on bearings maybe I will, I'll, these are my bearings and of course, there is the casing etcetera. This could be any machine okay. and if I put a transducer here. this is my transducer. Okay. Now, what would happen is this transducer if it was going to sense this gap, every rotation what would happen is this time, this is the voltage as generated by the uh, sensor and this would be nothing but one revolution of that shaft. Now, if the speed of the shaft was changing because of the dynamics of the machine, what would happen? This time period would either decrease or increase, but that transducer or which is sometimes known as a 
key phaser by some commercial companies gives the signal as to indicate whether the shaft has come just below or the key has come just below the transducer. So, any speed fluctuation is captured by just knowing that one rotation of the shaft has been completed. Now, if while we are doing a data acquisition, for example, if I had put an accelerometer here or a vibration sensor here, and through the appropriate software, a command was given that only when this transducer senses a spike, then only you acquire the data. So, in that sense, it always become, becomes that this is kind of synchronous to the location of the key wave below the transducer. So, if the speed is changing, I do not worry, each time I will be capturing my data just from one single point and this could be my vibration data. And if this vibration data had noise, this would look something like this. And then if I repeatedly added such signals from the vibration sensor and did a mean, I would get a neat signal like this. And this is what we had perhaps discussed earlier, this is known as synchronous time domain averaging. So, such synchronous time domain averaging, if we are collected by a key phaser triggering, what we could do is we could remove the non-stationarity non out of a signal, because how this order analysis helps us, because I do not want to bring in a speed fluctuation effect. is reduced or minimized in the frequency domain analysis. Well, what does this mean? What does this mean? Just to recollect, I had told you about stationary signal and non-stationary signals. So, I want to remove the non-stationarity out of a signal and just find out the stationary component of the signal. But that does not mean that non-stationary signals have no use, use in condition monitoring, no that is not right. For example, if I take the case of a some impact, okay, okay, I could do the frequency characteristics of such an impact by techniques of signal processing, which are known as you know wavelet analysis, short time Fourier transform etcetera. Okay. Just to understand the frequency characteristics of such non stationary signals. So, there are well established signal processing techniques like wavelet analysis, STFT or short time Fourier transform to find out the frequency characteristics of non stationary signals or which are known as the time frequency characteristics. We are not going to discuss about this, but we are rather going to discuss whether in a rotating machine if there is a small fluctuation of speed, it leads to non stationarity, but I, st I am still interested to find out the stationary component of the signal. So, what kind of analysis we do? Like I just explained you, we do the time synchronous averaging by a key phaser signal or by a trigger signal obtained from the key. 
let us see if this speed was fluctuating while we are doing a for a frequency transformation what would happen. So, if I take such a signal and do the frequency domain analysis I will see just one peak perhaps. Right? Because this is one signal, but imagine if for some reason there was a speed fluctuation in the machine. So, what is going to happen? So, in such a case, what would have going to happen is you know we will start with the low frequency, maybe during the process of operation. I will see in the FFT many frequencies, one because of the low frequency, one because of the high frequency. So, I have mischaracterized my signal because the signals time spacing or frequency had changed while I was doing the FFT operation. So, this is not right. I would not like to have such an analysis where the frequency representation is a smeared bandwidth. smeared in frequency domain. Okay. So, rather we will now see how such a smearing can be avoided rather than looking at the frequencies had I looked at how many revolutions it had completed I could have got this. So, I will remove my time index from time to maybe number of revolutions and that means actually orders, how many orders are present. So, no matter whatever is the time taken as long as one complete revolution is not completed, I will not uh, be uh, getting affected. So, uh, you see in uh, many machines we have moving and fixed parts in machines. For example, this moving parts could be rotating or could be reciprocating, rotating parts could be shafts, gears, reciprocating parts could be piston etcetera. So, the frequency of these rotating parts or the reciprocating parts are always related to the rotational speed. If my rotational speed changes, these frequencies would change but there will be also certain fixed parts like the body panels and casings. They will have certain resonance frequencies and these frequencies are not going to change no matter what happens to your speed. So, you can see that there are some frequencies related to rotational speed. speed like say for example, gear mesh frequency or G M F. This is nothing but number of teeth times the rotational speed. Right. So, you see if the, if the rotational speed changes the gear mesh frequency in the spectrum is going to change and if the machine there is a small fluctuation in speed, this fluctuation in speed could be because of power supply variation, could be because of the fre supply frequency variation, could be because of the load on the machine. So, there will be momentarily a speed change. So, this is going to affect the gear mesh frequency because if you know if you are doing 100 averages of an FFT operation, it takes certain time. Within that time taken to do 100 averages, if the speed changes changed, you would have got a smeared frequency spectrum and that is what we want to avoid by order analysis rather than let us look into how many complete revolutions have occurred. But in there are also in machines certain fixed parts like the body 
panels, casings, and because they are structural components, they have mass, they have stiffness, they will be also having a resonant frequency. So, you see in the same machine, there are two classes of frequencies. One is the one like example, the gear mass frequency related on rotational speed, another resonant frequencies which is not related to rotational speed. speed. Okay. So, this is very easy to detect. For example, in a frequency spectrum out of a machine, suppose I had the liberty or the convenience of changing the rotational speed, what would happen? Every frequencies which were not related to the rotational speed like a structural resonant frequency would be constant, right? they would not change. But anything which is related to the rotational speed will change. This is one set, maybe this is another set, okay. set 1, set 2, but these are these are fixed, they are fixed. So, very easily I can find out the resonant frequency or the uh, sets of rotational speeds. So, usually when I have the opportunity of ramping up or run up. A run up or coast up or a run down, coast down, they mean the same thing. This means I am increasing the speed rotational speed, speed from a lower to a higher value and this is vice versa, this is the reverse. Okay. That means, if I was to plot the speed and say maybe the virus and amplitude this would this would be a run up case okay i'll give an example where they used a lot of run ups let's take the case of a gas turbine you know, gas turbines have to run at almost around 20000 to 30000 rpm so one has to start from re, uh, start from rest from 0 hertz all the way up to uh, 20000 rpm so, what happens in this 0 to 20,000 rpm, you can understand that there will be many modes of natural frequency of this rotating shafts. So, imagine if I was to very slowly you know, increasing, increasing the speed from 0, 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 300 hertz and then I am sure to pass through couple of resonances of this rotating speeds of the rotating shafts of the turbine. And if so happens, if I stay for a longer time at one of these uh, resonating speeds, I may be I may be um, creating uh, harm to the shaft in the sense f uh, the shaft could be subjected to high fatigue loads. So in, in in fact, when the uh, switch on a gas turbine, they usually ask you to you know, accelerate up to the rotational speed. Well, at the same time, not stay at a particular speeds for. Uh, till you reach the final speed at for a longer time. Because as you know, you will see in rotodynamics that it takes time for the amplitude to build up at resonance. Okay. So, you have to quickly pass through the resonance. Okay. And, and if you have sat in aircrafts when the pilot was starting the engine, you would have experienced that once it goes up to a, the high, highest RPM of the gas turbine, you will go through regimes of uh, different uh, resonating frequencies and you will you can feel that kind of jerk or uh, no, loud uh, noise at particular frequencies that is when you are passing the resonances okay so that is what is known as a run up or a coast up and then similarly when you switch off a machine 
it will come down to rest and that will be coast down or run down. So, if I was to measure the acceleration of such a coast up or coast down and do a frequency domain analysis, you will see that how the frequency distribution will get uh, smeared. Rather than this, if we measure just the order or the rotation of the machines, you will see that the fixed speeds will be not affected by the rotational change in the rotational speed of the machine. So, uh, why this vibration and uh, sound mechanisms are generated because of the critical speeds of the rotating shafts, because of excited resonances and stabilities and uh, varying loads and this is what is responsible for vibration and sound generation in machines. Okay. Instabilities could be because of uh, the operational difficulties or because of the dynamic conditions, loads could be varying because depending on the applications and some of the resonances in the structure or in the machine could be excited while you are doing a coast up or coast down. So, we will see how such frequencies can be identified by this very convenient technique of order analysis. So, uh, to summarize you know you recall order analysis is the technique by which instead of looking at the frequency domain in the x axis, we are looking in the orders or in how many rotations the shaft has undergone and uh, one rotation means you know one complete order and so on. So, uh, the what is the principle behind this order analysis? It is the key to sound and vibration analysis on rotating machines, because the rotational speed of the machine is simultaneously measured with the measurement of sound and vibration. I just gave you an example how the key or the key phasor signal was measuring the rotational position or rotational speed and simultaneously it was triggering the accelerometer kept on the bearing to measure the vibration. So, this is combinedly measured and when the analysis is related to rotational speed, it is called as order analysis. So, rotational speed given by rpm is nothing but the revolutions per minute and that is the first order. So, for example, if a machine is running at 1000 rpm, the first order is 1000 rpm, its harmonic would be uh, 2000 rpm and so on. So, well, what is the what are the methods of order analysis? We will be in this class uh, discussing on uh, FFT based order analysis, but then there are certain two other techniques time signal recording and short time Fourier transform and uh, volt Kalman order tracking filter technique. You know, these are techniques uh, which we will discuss in the advanced level courses on uh, either on signal processing or machinery fault diagnostics. But this suffices to say, for example, in a, a multi stage gearbox or a turbine, if there are just not one single shaft, but you know there are multiple shafts, one turbine, uh, many rotating shafts. If this was a rotating at n rpm, you know, this could be 48 times n and so on. Okay. And suppose from the vibration monitoring of these machines, I just want to know what is the condition of this shaft. So, I know this shaft is occurring at 48 times the rotational speed. So, I would like to see the vibration spectrum of the 48th order. Okay. If I capture the order here by a key phasor signal by certain estimation techniques like the volt Kalman filtering technique, I can find out how in the total vibration spectrum, how is the 48th order changing and then I can find out the only the vibration response of the uh, or the this will be in orders of the 48 order which is something like this. So, I can find out what is the vibration of this. We are not going to discuss this in detail, but we are going just uh, focus our attention to just a single shaft, how by doing a rotational speed analysis I we can find out the order. So, I will uh, take you to an example uh, which we uh, do in the lab. So, let me first explain you this setup here what we have is you know 
This is a rotating shaft which is supported on two bearings, okay. bearing 1, bearing 2. On top of bearing 1, I have put an uh, accelerometer which measures the vibration in the vertical direction and this disc has a provision to which we can introduce unbalance by just putting in the bolt here and uh, this is uh, there is a motor driving the shaft motors behind this panel and we can uh, set up the speed of the motor in terms of whether you want to run up run at a constant speed or you can by varying this potentiometer you can do a run up or run down of this machine. Now to measure the very important rotational speed, this is a photoelectric uh, tachometer as in there is a optically reflective, reflective strip here. So a light will be focused or pointed at this shaft and this light is going to reflect back. So every rotation of this shaft, I will get a one light pulse back. So this is how this tacho pulse will, will measure that one rotation of the shaft is complete and simultaneously it is going to through the acquisition process capture this uh, accelerometer signal or the vibration signal and then it is going to plot it. So there are many ways of representing this order uh, case. One is this is the normal condition of the shaft wherein there was no unbalance and the top one this is the y axis here is the amplitude of vibration. The x axis is the frequency and this is up to 3.2 kilohertz and the z axis is the rotational speed in rpm of the shaft okay. and the such a kind of plot is known as waterfall plot. For example, this takes time to build up. So there is one spectrum behind which is another spectrum, another spectrum and so on and all these spectrums are stacked behind each other okay. and this looks like a waterfall plot. But what happens you will see here there is it is very difficult to distinguish the frequencies because the frequencies have got kind of smeared and then rather if I looked at the order here this is the same time axis or the rpm axis this is the amplitude and this is the order. I see a peak in the third order in the sixth order and so on okay. and so this means that the vibration here is related to the rotational speed is what I can very clearly see this is the first spectrum behind it is the second spectrum third spectrum and so on. So all these spectrums are stacked. So I can see all these frequencies which you see in this plot here, they are related to the rotational speed. Unfortunately, in this experiment, because this experiment was uh, this setup is designed so that none of the natural frequencies are there in the operating zone, I do not see a fixed frequency sticking up here. But you will see something very interesting happening once we go to the what uh, to the unbalanced case. If you look at this disc, yellow disc in the middle, this yellow disc in the middle, there are many holes okay, radially placed and if I put one, if I physically put one bolt and this is made to rotate, so I will get an unbalanced force M omega square r where m is the mass of this unbalance. So this unbalanced force is going to give me a force every rotation. Okay. So here you look on the third rotation and sixth rotation and so on and some higher rotations I am getting a lot of vibration levels and that could be something related to the other phenomena in the rig. But if I go to the another plot of this and this is nothing but the same thing as a, on a contour plot where you can see the because you know that's, that was a little skewed and you see this is the, the color is the amplitude band and uh, that is the amplitude and this is the frequency and this is the order. 
you see looking at here particularly in the third order you can see this red strip okay the amplitudes of vibration are high okay this is related to the third rotational speed now what we did was we introduce unbalance onto the system once we introduce unbalance into the system and what we did was in all these cases even in the previous cases what we did was while this data was been collected we physically move this rotated the potentiometer so that the speed went from 0 hertz to 4000 rpm or 0 rpm to 4000 rpm okay while the data was been collected so we have sweep the entire frequency spectrum and this is the collection of such a frequency spectrum because had i just an a simple fft and all the frequencies will get uh, represented and you will perhaps not see here but there is a small because this is only till 160 hertz these lines are not straight and there are little bend okay but if i sorry if i go to the case of the unbalance and there is frequency smearing but the most important thing is in the very first order the frequencies have shown up the amplitudes are high in the first order because they are related to the first rotational 1x component okay so this becomes very important to find out because in this frequency spectrum it is very difficult to know whether my 1x is the most offending frequency or 2x or 3x but if i do an order analysis you see things which are related to the rotational speed they show up, show up okay and then you see this frequencies now the same waterfall plot i mean just to so water, waterfall plot is a three dimensional plot this is your frequency this is your amplitude and this is your time you all are familiar with the single frequency amplitude and that was nothing but the spectrum but with time look okay, with time if you stack up all the spectrums right and if the frequency was constant if the rotational speed was constant what would happen in this line you will get a peak like this agreed but if the rotational speed was changing you will get something like this isn't it if you stack up and if i just picked up the peaks okay and if you so this is if i this was just for a single single uh, spectrum if i average all of these together i would get a frequency smearing isn't it but if i just stack them up in terms of the orders i will see the phenomena which are related to the rotational speed okay so, so waterfall plot is a three dimensional plot instead of frequency i could also be having orders in orders in uh, in this example you see for the unbalanced condition a lot of smearing occurring okay I, if you look at this red curve here you cannot see whether this is because of a rotational speed or something else but if you look at the orders here you see distinct peaks coming out okay. frequency smearing has occurred here with the top axis this is frequency and the top plot this is frequency in the bottom plot this is order here frequency smearing has occurred but in this case nice distinct orders have come out and the first order is related to the unbalanced condition
Okay. So, waterfall plot is a three dimensional plot which gives us an instant recognition of the change in frequency in the spectrum. And then if you look at the contour plot, this is another way of representing that same uh, three dimensional plot. You see the first order is very strong here case of the unbalance. And again if you, you cannot perhaps see this in the black curve here, because we had done a ramp up operation, there is a speeding up or the change in the frequency. Okay. Now, once you have talked about the waterfall plot, there is another plot I will uh, just explain you or rather tell you cam bell diagram. This is used in uh, our rotor dynamics. where as a function of r p m, the r p m are the uh, with time frequency and r p m, okay, they will at different r p m c we generate the kind of the amplitudes and wherever they kind of meet, you can find out this is to find out all, all, all suffice, suffice to say that to determine resonances in or resonance or, or critical speeds of shafts. Okay. Shafts need not have only one critical speed. Particularly when we design say for example, an electric motor. and electric motors or the gearbox etcetera, we run it at 1440 rpm. Okay. As a designer, I can very well design the shaft depending on the mass and stiffness, you would have studied that in vibration. So, that the rotational or the critical speed of this shaft or the resonating frequency of the shaft is well beyond 1440 rpm. Okay. If you take it 1500, 1560 is about 30 hertz. So, I can design a shaft that its resonating frequencies is beyond 30 hertz, right? no problem. But say for example, I have a gas turbine okay. gas turbine you know, 100 megawatt gas turbine. So, which rotates at 20,000 or maybe 30,000 rpm. Okay. 30,000 rpm corresponds to 30,000 by 60, 500 hertz. So, its operational speed is 500 hertz and it would be almost impossible to have a resonant frequencies only above 500 hertz. A designer would have a tough time designing such a system whose resonating frequencies is only beyond 500 hertz. So, that would require for a that would require a very very thin shaft and obviously, a 100 megawatt uh, gas turbine cannot be so thin that its resonating frequency is beyond 500 hertz. Well, as a as a designer why do you require it beyond 500 hertz? Because it should not excite or it should not get excited by the operational speeds, but that is not the case. There will be may be 3 or 4 frequencies resonating frequencies below 500 hertz. So, it suffices to say that there are shafts whose resonating frequencies are within the operating zone. right? So, I have to find out what these resonating frequencies are and only during operations I can make sure that I do not 
excite these rhetoric frequencies. So, Campbell diagram is used by designers, by uh, maintenance engineers to diagnose and find out rotating speeds, critical rotating speeds of large rotating machines or machines operating at high speed, high speeds, okay, 500 hertz and so on. For electric motors where we are talking about single speeds, we do not talk about Campbell diagrams, but when there are flexible rotors of uh, lot of rotational and critical speeds, we will talk about Campbell diagrams. So, right now I will not focus more on the Campbell diagrams, but let us see the importance of this key phaser. You will see in condition based maintenance where vibration is an important parameter to be measured, rotational speed is also a very, very important parameter which is to be measured, because you just saw an example wherein many of the frequencies which we see in the frequency spectrum, they are related to the rotational speed of the machine. So, it is but important for us that we must measure the rotational speed. So, the key phaser technique is used uh, as a very convenient means to measure the rotational speed, wherein it just gives a voltage signal. Okay. And this could be through inverse of this. Because the inverse of this time period is the rotational speed. If the time period changes, I do not care, the rotational speed would be measured. The rotational speed could be changing, but there are again algorithms if I will get a pulse strain, square pulse out of such certain voltage. The average spacing between these will be my rotational speed. So, there could be you know in, in, in there could be a digital indicator of the rotational speed just by measuring it is nothing but a frequency counter. Just by putting a frequency counter digital frequency counter I can get the rotational speed, but mind you this rotational speed you know if, if the, the digital display or the your sampling was very quick, you will see these numbers jumping down and that happens in many of the machines which will go out to the plant and see that the numbers will be jumping around maybe 1239, 12, 1241, 1230 etc. These numbers jump around because this speed is fluctuating. Imagine while the speed is fluctuating, if you are doing an average FFT, you will have disastrous results, the results will have no meaning. So, that is the reason why we synchronize our acquisition process by just the triggering signal. So, order tracking or order analysis requires two very, very important measurements. One is the rotational speed, and other is the parameter, it could be the vibration, it could be noise, etcetera, also and then we will see anything which is related to the rotational speed will show up as you know 1 x, 2 x, 3 x and so on. One very important application of order analysis is the engine firing frequency. Let us take the case of a four cylinder, four stroke 
engine. Say this was running at 600 rpm, idling at 600 rpm. Okay. The question to you is what is the engine's firing frequency? By firing frequency means at what frequency the combustion is occurring. Imagine for a four stroke engine means for every two revolutions I will have one combustion is not it right. So, in 600 rpm that means 600 revolutions per minute or 600 by 60 hertz okay, divide by 1 by 2 is the firing times 4 is the firing frequency because there are 4 cylinders. Now, if this was a 2 stroke engine this would have been 1 because for every rotation I was getting a firing. So, this is what is the engine firing frequency and that will come down to 10 to 20 hertz. Okay. I do not know if you have experienced this, but uh, no, if you have uh, sat on a, the, the, a jeep, uh, you do not see them in you know, the modern SUVs or MPVs etcetera, but if you are talking about those old jeeps you know, or the you know, taxes which come from the railway station, you know, very ill kept taxes. If the driver was idling, you will see, you will kind of feel this rattling grrr, 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 the noise and that is actually at the engine firing frequency. Okay. And if you measure that, you will see this 20 hertz component. And you will, you will be perhaps being sometimes even see the steering column shaking because the steering column which is fixed to the firewall and next to it is the engine. If the engine is running, once you are idling the engine, it is running at 20 hertz. So, there will be instances where the steering column's natural frequency could be close to 20 hertz okay. and there will be the steering column would be rattling. I do not know how many of you have observed that, particularly in old jeeps and cars particularly in the case of diesel engines okay, where the forces are high, you will see that the steering column of the vehicle gets excited one at a particular uh, speed, particularly in idle. What was the source of excitation here? It is the engine firing frequency because engine by engine firing I mean the engine's combustion cycle. Okay, there will be a sudden build up of pressure Okay, and this would come down with time and this is like a burst. Okay, every cycle one burst is happening okay. and this burst is an excessive pressure wave. So, this pressure wave is giving the forcing function and this forcing function is coming at 20 hertz and then it may so happen that the steering column is having a resonant frequency. In fact, you know we are uh, I was doing an, uh, some work for a tractor company, they had a tractor as soon as the tractor was uh, switched on, there was a lot of shake on the steering wheel. And you know, imagine if a driver is uh, going to you know hold on to the steering wheel and the steering wheel was having a lot of vibrations, okay, it would not be very convenient or comfortable for the driver to hold. So, if we find out, find out that that uh, steering column or the steering uh, wheel in fact steering wheel actually it has a steel uh, structure inside it. Steering wheel had a natural frequency of 29 hertz and uh, somehow that uh, that engine firing frequency was very close to that um, 29 hertz during idling at, at a particular rpm. Rpm was about 780 was the rpm engine idling rpm. In this case example we took at 600 rpm, I vaguely remember it was around 750 rpm was the idling speed <coughs> and uh, the way to do this was you know we could not do anything with the engine, engine was made by somebody else. So, engine had its idling frequency at about uh, firing frequency at about 30 hertz. So, what we did is by changing the mass and stiffness of the steering wheel, we could shift its frequency natural frequency. So, that 
Henceforth, once this engine was uh, running, it, the uh, steering wheel was no longer vibrating. So, this is how we can uh, diagnose, you know, this was not a case of a diagnosis, but mostly a case of a design. But by such techniques, we can find out the, uh, the natural frequencies and how to avoid them in design. I was telling the example of gas turbines, we cannot possibly avoid them. But at least if we know these natural frequencies, we will not operate at those natural frequencies. But for the case of a tractor, I mean, you can always idle the engine and stay still. But this idling frequency, if it is close to the uh, uh, resonant frequency of the steering wheel, it is going to either have large motions of the steering uh, wheel. So, that is to be avoided. So, order analysis is one technique by which we can uh, find out the frequencies which are related to the rotational speed of the machines. So, if in the spectrum, say if some of the, of course, in this examples here, some of these uh, frequencies are not related to the rotational speed. If they were related to the, uh, not related to the rotational speed, they could be lying in between these. And perhaps, if you go to the higher frequencies, you will see that some of the frequencies do show up, okay. And they are beyond the operating zone of the rotational, uh, of the test rig. Thank you.